Hi, welcome to my channel. I'm the Crypto Lifer. Hope you're having a good morning, day, afternoon, night, no matter where you are in the world. If you came to my channel and you like the vibe that I provide, please subscribe, hit the bell for notifications, and don't forget to hit that like button and please leave a comment. I absolutely love reading the comments. One thing I do have to say here, I am not a financial advisor. Please get yourself a financial advisor and do your own due diligence before getting into any project or trade. Do not take anything I say on this channel as financial advice. It's for speculative and entertainment purposes only. Today, I have an unbelievable video to bring you. What if you could fit a blockchain in the size of a kilobit thumbnail? That's right, 22 kilobits. The problem with a lot of blockchains is the nodes. So many people want to run a node on a blockchain. They have to find out how to download that entire blockchain. Eventually, as blockchains get bigger and bigger, only big, big tech companies will have the servers and the space to be able to provide the nodes. What happens when they become more centralized because of that? The coin I'm gonna talk about today will be taking care of that. How? Well, it can be downloaded by anybody and it can be put on a thumb drive, really. So almost anyone in the world can run a node. So get ready. I'm gonna put my hood on and we're gonna get ready to do a deep dive. Oh, what a ride we just went on. Love getting into that suit and flying through space on my deep dives. So check it out. I'm talking about Mina Protocol. That's right, Mina Protocol. Created by two friends who knew each other for a long time. We're watching blockchain and they figure, you know what? There's an issue with these blockchains. Too many people have to download the nodes and what happens if the nodes get too big that only giant server farms can hold them? Therefore, you need to have a lot of money and a lot of infrastructure to be able to support a node. What happens when the average person can't and the control of these nodes becomes centralized. That worried them. So they went out to find a way to create a blockchain with zero space. That's right, that's right. You can download this blockchain and it's only 22 kilobytes. So you'd ask, how does Mina Protocol do this? Well, let me explain. They do it with called zero knowledge proof. That's right. You're able to put proofs inside of proofs that let you know that something is true without actually knowing it. It's insane. What we're talking about here with Mina is it doesn't have to have all the information stored. It just needs a picture of that information. Imagine if you dug up some treasure in your yard and you found gold. Now you want to show everyone that you found the gold, but you wouldn't want to actually bring the gold around. It's too heavy, too big, and you're worried someone might actually take it. So you take a picture of the gold to show everyone. But what if next week you go and you dig up some diamonds? Now you want to show a picture of the diamonds and the gold. How Mina Protocol works is instead of showing both those pictures, you would put the pictures together and then take a picture of that. See what I'm saying? As you add transactions to the blockchain on Mina, you keep adding another zero proof to the next zero proof. You keep collecting the snapshot into the snapshot. It's truly fascinating and absolutely mind-blowing. Mina, the world's lightest blockchain powered by participants. Mina is building a gateway between the real world and crypto and infrastructure for the secure democratic future we all deserve. Now by design, the MENA protocol is only 22 kilobits, the size of a couple tweets, so participants can quickly sync and verify the network like that. Two seconds. The idea of decentralization is the more people can verify the network, the more decentralized it is and the safer it is. That's the idea. That's why cryptocurrency is what I love the most. It's community driven. It's not about having one person having all the power. It's about distributing all the power and watching something be that powerful by all the people that contribute it, not letting one person hold the power from everyone else. Like almost all centralized power, the medical field has centralized their power. Even the educational field has centralized their power. Big business has found their way into almost all aspects of our life. Could blockchain fully be the way that we all actually become community driven and free ourselves of big business? Let's hope so. So as you can see here, Mina is 22 kilobits, fixed size. But the other blockchains, 300 gigabits. Now, how do they make a fixed size if they keep adding transactions to the blockchain? They took some of the technology from Algo Creator, a zero knowledge proof. That's right, zero knowledge proof. That way, you just keep taking snapshots of each other and you don't add more space. You just add more pictures of what's happening. So through zero knowledge proof is how they're able to keep this blockchain teensy Weensy, weensy. It'll be easily accessible. Other blockchain protocols are so heavy, they require intermediaries to run the nodes, recreating the same old power dynamics. But Mina is light, so anyone can connect peer to peer and quickly sync and verify the chain. Built on consistent sized cryptographic proof, the blockchain will stay accessible even as it scales. Like it was never gonna get that big. 
It's insane. It's truly decentralized with every user acting as a full node. With Mina, anyone who's syncing the chain is also validating transactions like a full node. Mina's design means any participant can take part in the proof of stake consensus, have access to strong censorship resistance, and secure the blockchain, right? If more people can download and more people can be nodes, then the blockchain is probably very, very secure. This is very interesting. However, I did find out that Mina did hold a lot of its storage on a Google Cloud. That worries me a little bit. I hope eventually we can get them onto a SIA coin or another decentralized place. For right now, they needed to build the infrastructure, so I get it. But I hope in the future, we pull away from that Google Cloud. But right now, Mina's doing what they had to do to get to the forefront. I think we'll be able to add to what they've done to make it more and more decentralized. Today, users have no alternative to handing over their data to powerful players in exchange for participation in the modern world. But Mina's snark-powered decentralized apps and they have a snark it too, just like a market, pretty interesting. They keep users in control by validating and sharing proofs about their data. Rather than the data itself, even to counterparties, and with logic and data computed off-chain and verified on-chain, snaps make scalability simple and large computations efficient and cost-effective. Okay? It's a snark-powered, decentralized app. Snaps. Connecting crypto to the real world. Other blockchain protocols don't interact with the internet limiting their application scope and utility. But Mina's snaps can privately interact with any website and access verified real-world data for use on-chain. So developers can leverage the world's information and computing and decision-making to change the way we live and work without ever compromising the privacy of a user's sensitive data. It's really, really awesome. Powered by a growing community, other blockchains are run by powerful ecosystem inter intermediaries, meaning like, like Phantom. You have to spend 80 grand to get a phantom node or something, 130 grand. So like anyone who's running these nodes are already substantially high end net worth people, right? What about the people that are beginning? What about the people at the grassroots? This program brings people in from the grassroots. That's why I really like Mina Protocol. I'm pushing for this decentralization and I want us all to be able to control a node. In this way, because it's so small and we can all download it, it's, it doesn't give the power to people that have tons of money and are the elitist. That's been the problem since the beginning. So why go back and have the same issues? Why recreate technology and then just have the same issues to begin with? Mina's trying to change that from the jump. Now this gives anyone with a smartphone the power to build, participate, exchange, and thrive in the world in the coming ecosystem of cryptocurrencies. So some big news on the 14th of July, Evan Shapiro became the CEO of Mina Foundation. Pretty cool. He left becoming the CEO of Zero One Labs. I like that. That means, you know, he started Zero One Labs, created Mina, and now he realizes Mina's his baby. He's gave up his old parent company to be with his baby. I, I like what's going on here. That means he's dedicated. Evan Shapiro, man, pretty cool guy. Watch some interviews about them. Watch what they're talking about. In his new role at the CEO of Mina Foundation, Evan will be leading its mission to support Mina Protocol's technical architecture, ecosystem development, and to serve the community. As part of this, Mina Foundation will be focusing on growing awareness of Mina's technology, attracting the next wave of individuals and partners who want to become involved, and building the community's infrastructure for Mina to ultimately self-direct. Hear more about the transition directly from Evan. Look at this. Mina concludes 18.75 million community token sale with the highest number of purchases in CoinList history to date. With high demand, Mina sold out in four hours with more than 375,000 verified registrants and was oversubscribed by 8.8x. Mina already did a 10 to 20x at this point. Of course, the market took a beat down. Everything else is kind of hibernating at this point. But we're going to take a look at Mina on the chart. I'm going to show you why I think Mina is a buy right now and why it might even be retesting a certain key area of support. So stay tuned for that. I'm going to get into the technical analysis of Mina Protocol as well. Oh, guys, I love my Crypto Lifer merch. This merch is amazing. Check it out in our store in the link below. You'll absolutely love your merch. Let everybody know you're a Crypto Lifer and you're going to be in crypto for life. So what's a snark producer and what does that mean? Well, snark producers help compress data in the network by generating snark proofs of transactions. They then sell those snark proofs to the block producers on the snarketplace in return for a portion of the block rewards. So if running a node so easy, how do I run a node? Let's find out. With the world's lightest blockchain, running a node is easier than ever. Here you'll find everything you need to know to get up and running. So I want to run a node. I want to get started. How do I do it? Install Mina. Check the system requirements and install Mina. The Mina package is around 100 megabytes, which is smaller than most, but still takes some time. 
Connect to the network. Configure your network and use the provided seed nodes to connect to the live peer-to-peer -peer MENA network. And then send a transaction. Create a new account. Request MENA tokens from the faucet. Then send funds to MENA's eco service and you're done. Also, they'll give you some MENA for the faucet to pay for the transactions right off the bat. Every single protocol should have a faucet, honestly. A faucet just means like an ability to get a tiny amount of the coin so you can pay for their first few transactions or at least get MENA to where you need it to go at the beginning, you know? Testnet, check out what's in beta. Take on the testnet challenges and earn testnet points. Then there's the Genesis program, calling all block producers and snark producers, community leaders and content creators. Join Genesis, meet great people, play an essential role in the network and earn MENA tokens. Now I've researched the project the people behind it, and the tech. I understand what makes it unique. I understand a little bit of how it works, not into all the intricacies, but most of them. I also understand why it's more decentralized. Now, with all that being said, before I get into a project, I still need to know a lot more about it. I need to know its market cap. I need to see the volume that it had today. I want to look at it on a chart, and I want to get a view of where it is, if there's support and resistance. This is how I combine technical analysis with fundamental analysis to create the perfect marriage of when and how to invest. Come on, check it out. We're going to look at the chart right now and break it down. Right here behind me is the chart for MENA protocol. Let's dive into it and let's see what's going on. First thing I want to do is look at it on the daily time frame and just see really what happened to MENA. Interesting enough, MENA came out at about $10 a coin. It says it was $9.55. It would get sold off very, very hard, and then the market would just completely dump. It was a new project that really didn't have any of the bull runs steam with it. And, you know, when the market was going that bad with a lot of FUD, this people just who probably got into the presale took what they could get and ran. And eventually they just bottomed this thing out. So, good sign for Mina because you're going to be buying this thing on the low. One thing is the daily's a little high, but there's not much information there. Let's go to the four hour time frame. That's also high too. Very, very interesting. Mina had a bit of a pump recently. It went all the way from about 91 cents all the way to $1.33. So it literally just did about a 50% pump. Now, what I'm looking at here is, look, shoulder, head, and a shoulder for sure. And then you have a neckline here, which we got a bit rejection, rejection. And now you see that there's this zone here of support and resistance. Mina is coming and bouncing off of that very nicely. I switched back to the one hour just to get the health of the measured move, see what's going on. It does look like it's doing a retest and bouncing off previous support. That would be a support and resistance flip. You have previous resistance right here, and then you're bouncing off of it as support. Previous resistance becomes new support with a down stochastics on the one hour. It's quite interesting. And it may start to form a bit of a pennant here before it breaks out yet again. Watch well, the four hour reset. If the 4-hour resets and MENA can go sideways and stay above $1.19, that's going to be very, very bullish for MENA. Now, I did that technical analysis and shot that segment about a week ago. I included it in this video because I wanted to show you how it played out so you could see the type of information you get in my Patreon. I give my Patreons video calls like the one you saw here explaining what is going to happen to MENA. They take those calls and use them to their advantage. This call itself made 44% gains. Let's backtrack in the chart to where I made the call on the four hour, which was right around here. As you can see, I'm talking about this inverted head and shoulders, the breakup. I'm saying if it can retest 119 area, Mina could probably go up to the upside. At the time, I didn't know this, but it's what I know about trading and all the trades that I've seen in my life that made me made that projection. Now, when you press play, it did bounce off that area, kept going, and boom. Everyone in my Patreon, in my call group, they made 44% gains on mina protocol so just wanted to show you how this call eventually did play out and many more so join my patreon if you like gains here i am at coin market cap you'd want to go to coin market cap it's a great resource to find out all the information you can about any coin it'll show you all the exchanges it's on the historical data information from years ago what the price was it also give you all the social media links and its market cap and its circulating supply so here, we're looking at MENA protocol right now. It's $1.23 today, up 10%. Yeah, MENA, pumping a little bit today. Not bad. Now, the market cap is $221 million. I stop right there because just getting to a billion isn't that hard. That can, that's a 5x right there, right there. This could easily get to a $2 billion market cap 
even a $5 billion market cap, in my opinion. But $2, two billion is very, very plausible. So that means this thing can 10x very easily. Look for Mina Protocol to be back to its $10, probably within six to seven months or earlier. If the market can really come back strong, it could be even earlier than that. But I believe you're in for at least a 10x with Mina Protocol. Then I like to look at their Twitter, and you can see after that giant pre-sale, you can tell that they're actually very, very popular. Look at Mina Protocol right here with 112,000 followers on Twitter. That's some of the most Twitter followers I've seen of any project in the game. So that also lets you know, I'm going to follow them right there. And you guys should follow me as well at CryptoLifer33. I'd really, really appreciate it. That's Mina Protocol, guys. I hit you with the one, two. I gave you the information. I gave you the people behind it. And I gave you the technical analysis. These are reasons why I think Mina could actually do wonders for your wallet, your hardware crypto wallet, that is. Thank you so much for watching this content. If you like the content and the way it was presented and you love my vibe, know I go online every single day, Monday through Friday from 10 a.m. to 12 p.m. and Saturday and Sunday nights at 8 p.m. Sunday nights for the weekly candle close. I also make content just like this video and try to produce three to seven videos a week on top of the daily live stream. You can also catch me on the Crypto Lifestyle once a week, making other content similar to this, which is another YouTube channel that I'm associated with. If you want to know more about me and become a Crypto Lifer, please join the Crypto Lifer International Trading Group. The link is in the description of my video. If you like what you see there and you'd like to pay $99 a month to become a Patreon, you could do that as well. Inside my Patreon, you get access to six telegram rooms, including a beginners and expert room where beginners and experts merge together and people teach each other technical analysis. I also have admins and analysts that are willing to help you every step of the way. I also do my own exclusive charts and calls only, and I also do a weekly screen share that's about two hours long where I give you access to a investor plan of token metrics, also give you all the things that I'm looking out for, and give you basically weekly advice as you get through cryptocurrency so we can navigate what's happening in this volatile space. If that's not enough, I also offering one-on-one -on -one tutoring. I'll sit with you. I'll teach you how to use DeFi in a MetaMask wallet. I'll teach you how to set up your TradingView account. Or if you're more expert, I'll teach you divergences, Fibonacci, and get you going to the next level of technical analysis. That is my one-on-one -on -one tutoring and consulting. Hit the link below to my tutoring. It'll take you right to my schedule, and you can just pick a time that suits you. And me and you will be face-to-face, one-on-one. Thank you so much for watching. Please comment, like, and subscribe. Hit the bell for notifications so you can find out when I post my next video. And remember, if you came to this channel, then you're already doing the right thing. Crypto is life.